Hi. Has it ever occurred to you that God's answers lie in the questions he asks? You see, man is fond of asking God questions, but God too is fond of asking man questions. And has it ever occurred to you that his answers, more often than not, lie in the very questions he asks us? My name is Patrick Kuchio from Sitam Church Online, and I invite you to join me on this conversation. As we look on this subject, God's answers are in the questions he asks. God's answers are in the questions he asks. I grew up being told that never attempt to answer a question with a question. I was told in high school and in primary school that that would be rude. And indeed it is rude in human interactions. But when God deals with us, occasionally he asks us questions, not because he does not know the answers because God is all-knowing. So when God asks questions, it is important for you to pause to ask, what could God be up to lest you, you miss a God moment? You see, in the book of Genesis, God came and he asked Adam a question. Genesis chapter 3 verse 9. Where are you? From the face of it, it sounds like a very straightforward question that requires a straightforward answer. Adam, where are you? Now, God was not asking Adam because he had no clue where Adam was or he could not find him. Because God is all-knowing, he's omniscient. But Adam missed the visitation of God because he failed to discern a God moment when God asked the question, where are you? What was the problem? Adam had fallen into sin and his relationship with God had been affected. So when God came asking, Adam, where are you? He was presupposing something was the matter with the relationship. God's answers are in the questions he asks more often than not. God asks Moses a question. In Exodus chapter 4 verse 2, part A, God asked, what is that in your hand? What is that in your hand? It is not that God's sight is impaired, that he had no clue what Moses was holding. God knew what Moses was holding. But Moses, fortunately, did not miss a God moment. He answered, it's a staff. And God gives him instructions. Put down that staff. Turn into a snake. Now pick it up from the tail. Turns into a staff. God used that staff to deliver the children of Israel and to perform miracles in Egypt. God's answers are in the questions he asks. Moses would have said, well, I have nothing in my hand, just a stick. But that very stick is what God used. God asked Jeremiah a question in Jeremiah 32 verse 26. I am the Lord, the God of all mankind. Is anything too hard for me? I am the God, the Lord, the God of all mankind. Is there anything too hard for me? It seems a very straightforward rhetorical question. But God's answers lie in the questions he, ask, he asks. And Jeremiah too did not miss a God moment. Because God was up to something. God asked Job, a question 
out of a storm. In Job 38, from verse 1 to 3, it says, Then the Lord spoke to Job out of the storm. And Job 38, 39, 40, and 41 is a record of questions after questions that God posed to Job. And when you read the questions, they are very, very piercing questions. But you realize that God was up to something. And I am so glad that Job did not miss the moment, but he discerned correctly the God moment. God revealed to him because God's answers lie in the questions he asks. Jesus, coming to the New Testament, he also asked questions. In fact, one very humorous account is his account with Pilate, where Pilate asks him, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus answers with a question, Is this your own idea? Or did somebody say that to you? Very interesting, John chapter 19, from verse 33 following. But there's a question that Jesus asked the disciples in Matthew chapter 16, verse 13. Who do people say the Son of Man is? Who do people say the Son of Man is? From the face of it, you may wonder, what manner of question is this? Some, some, some of the disciples said, well, some say, you're Elijah. Some say you're John the Baptist or one of the prophets. Then he turned and asked them, but who do you say the son of man is? Peter designed the God moment and answered the question correctly. Jesus speaks to him and says, Peter, Thou hast answered correctly. And on this rock, I will build my church. God's answers lie in the questions he asks. Has God been asking you questions lately? As we go through this difficult phase of this pandemic, do you discern a God moment? Has the Spirit of God been tagging on your heart? asking you questions. Mary, Mark, where are you? Not because God does not know your geographical location. Maybe it's because you have fallen out of fellowship with him and he's asking, Mary, Mark, where are you? Have you had God ask you lately? Anthony, Patrick, what is that in your hand? Not that he has no clue what it is he has gifted you with. But could it be that God wants to use that gift in your hand to use it to perform miracles during this difficult time? I can hear God asking, Angela, Andrew, is anything too hard for me? You may say, well, that's a rhetorical question. Yes, it is. But God wants you to encounter him because when he asks a question, he's up to something. Maybe someone of you, some of you have heard God ask the question, why are you obscuring my identity with words that are without knowledge like he asked Job of old? Probably he's asking that just to grant you perspective. Maybe some of you have had God asking lately, who do you say the Son of Man is? He's asking that not because he wants some self-affirmation. No, he's asking that because he wants to reveal himself to you. You see, God asks so that he can restore us back to fellowship. Ask Adam, he will tell you, that is true, though I missed my moment. God asks so that he can assure us of his will. Ask Moses, and Moses will tell you, that is plain accurate. God asks so that he can reveal his power in our situations. 
Ask Jeremiah. And Jeremiah will tell you, that is spot on. God asks so that he can quieten our troubled hearts. Ask Job. And Job will tell you, I agree with you, Patrick. God asks so that he can reveal himself to us. Ask the disciples and they'll tell you. Precisely, in Caesarea Philippi, when he asked us who the people say the Son of Man is, he wasn't up for self-affirmation. He wanted to reveal himself to us. What are the questions that God has been asking you lately? Because God's answers lie in the questions he asks us. God is asking you a question as an individual. God is asking you a question as a family. God is asking us questions as nations. I pray that we will not miss the God moments, but that we will design the God moments that come with every question that God asks. And that when we design and answer correctly, we will encounter God in His power and in His glory. God's answers lie in the questions He asks. Maybe you're going through a season of doubt. And I can hear God asking, is anything too hard for me? Yes, you're out of a business. You're out of employment. You're wondering, where will I get the next meal for my family? Will I be able to bounce back from this COVID-19 pandemic? God is asking you, is anything too hard for me? The answer is absolutely none. But maybe there's one of you who God is asking, who do you say the Son of Man is? Because your response to that question could determine your destiny. Who do you say the Son of Man is? Some of you will say he was a fine historical figure. He was a legend. He visited Palestine. He performed miracles. That is not enough. I pray that when you hear God asking that question, who is the Son of God? You respond and say, He is God's answer to the problems of life. Once you respond that way, you'll be well on your way to encountering Jesus, the Son of God. The Lord bless you richly and may you encounter Him in the questions he asks of you this week and throughout life. My name is Patrick Cuccio from Sitem Church Online. I would like to know how you're engaging with this message. God's answers are in the questions he asks. Please get in touch with us through our social media platforms and we'll be sure to contact you and engage with you on the same message. God bless you richly. Amen. <music>